I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. January 1998, Bill Clinton is furiously and falsely denying a sexual relationship with a White House intern. And one day later, First Lady Hillary Clinton blames not the president, but his political foes. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. In private conversations later, notes taken by a longtime friend say Hillary Clinton dismissed Lewinsky as a narcissistic loony tune. And while she called her husband's behavior grossly inappropriate, she said the affair was consensual and hinted it was spurred by the political pressure he faced. It was a lapse. To his credit, he tried to break it off, tried to pull away, but it was beyond his control. Earlier this year, campaigning at a church, Clinton appeared to talk about forgiving her husband. It is human nature to say, you're not wanted. We know what you've been doing. We know what you've been up to. You go sleep in the bed you made. But she never overtly and publicly addresses the scandal. And in her 2003 book, she says she defended the president because she believed him, erupting when he finally confessed. Gulping for air, I started crying and yelling at him. What do you mean? What are you saying? Why did you lie to me? Still, her handling of the matter is complicated. For example, when she says survivors of sexual assault have a right to be believed, her critics summon the names of women who have accused her husband of just that. Would you say that about Johnita Broderick, Kathleen Wiley, and or Paula Jones? Should we believe them as well? Well, I would say that everybody should be believed at first until they are disbelieved based on evidence. It is a heroic stand for some voters and hypocrisy for others.